Hello all, my name is Vlad and welcome to my video where we'll discuss one very fun GMAT quant problem. This is one of my favorite quant problems because it looks very difficult from the first glance. However, when you start analyzing it, digging deeper, it becomes very solvable and you can solve it in under 30 seconds. So I will now present you the problem. Here it is. What is one factorial plus two factorial plus three factorial up until 10 factorial. And here are the five options the GMAT gives us. First things first, let's freshen up our memory on factorials or this weird exclamation marks at the end of each number in the question. So a factorial is used to denote a product of all numbers from one to n. I'll give you an example. 5 factorial equals to 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 times 5, which will give us 120. And now that we are completely sure that we understand the problem, we can start solving it. Our first reflex could just be to say, OK, there are only 10 numbers I have to add. How hard could it be? Maybe I can just sum them all up. However, if you look at the answer choices again, you can see that they're all quite large numbers, around 4 million. So as you can imagine, if that's the answer you're going to get in the end, maybe just adding all these factorials is not the right approach. It's not the easiest way to go. And you have to remember that the GMAT would never ask you to just brute force a complex calculation to find the answer. It is more about finding the most efficient way to solve any problem. So let's then start analyzing a problem a bit deeper. As it is the case with any GMAT problem, quant or verbal, answer choices provide some great information on the direction we have to take solving this problem. If we look at the answer choices, GMAT provides us, we can notice that there is something that unites them all. The first six numbers of each answer choice are the same. It is only the last number that is different. So essentially what the GMAT asks us to do here is to find the last number of the sum of 10 factorials. Finding the last number is a much easier task than finding them all. And now Let's try to dig deeper into the sum of 10 factorials we were asked about. By digging deeper, I mean taking a closer look at the numbers we actually have to sum up. This should be your first reflex when you encounter a GMAT quant problem you cannot solve right away. Don't panic. Well, you can panic for maybe three seconds, but try to limit it at that. Try to see what's actually going on with the problem. Try to search for some pattern, some irregularity, and you will surely find it in the end. Because every GMAT quant problem is essentially meant to be solved in two minutes. Therefore, you can find this solution in two minutes. And you just have to maybe dig a bit deeper, take a step back, and look at the problem the other way. Let's now analyze these factorials one by one and see what numbers are they equal to. So one factorial is one, two factorial is two, three factorial is six, four factorial is 24, five factorial is 120, six factorial is five factorial times six or 720. And now let's stop here and uh, look at the numbers we're getting. We can notice that 5 factorial and 6 factorial, they end with a 0. And as we have to find the last digit of the whole sum, there's actually quite a relief. These two factorials, 5 and 6, they have no impact whatsoever on the last digit of our sum. If we add 0, the last digit of 5 and 6 factorial, to it, well, this whole sum of factorials from 1 to 10 will not change. Let's actually see if the pattern continues for the remaining factorials. If you remember how we were finding each of the previous factorials, 
we can see that to find a new factorial, we have to multiply the previous one by a new number. The same way, 7 factorial equals to 6 factorial times 7. And as we remember, 6 factorial ends with a 0. From basic multiplication rules, we know that if we multiply a number ending with a 0 by any other integer, the product will end with a 0. The same way, 7 factorial, we don't care what the number is, right? We care only about the last digit. The same way, 7 factorial ends with a 0. If we continue looking at all the remaining factorials, we can see that, well, 8 factorial is 7 factorial times 8. Again, number ending with a 0 times any other number will still end with a 0. So 8 factorial also ends with a 0. The same goes for 9 factorial and 10 factorial. They all end with a 0, following the same rule. Well, there's actually quite a great piece of information. We know that all factorials from 5 to 10, they end with a 0. And thus, they have no impact whatsoever on the last digit of our sum. If we go back to our original question, finding the last digit of the sum of factorials from 1 to 10, we can see that we can omit the factorials from 5 to 10 altogether. They all end with a 0. They have no impact on our sum whatsoever. Therefore, we just have to calculate the sum of factorials from 1 to 4. Well, this is quite easy. The sum equals to 1 plus 2 plus 6 plus 24. The answer is 33. And the last digit of this sum equals to the last digit of our answer. The last digit of 33 is 3. The last digit of our answer is also 3. Therefore, B here is correct. Now, let's sum up what we did here. We firstly found out that we only care about the last digit of our sum of factorials from 1 to 10. We then analyzed the components of the whole sum. We saw a pattern. We saw that all factorials from 5 to 10, they end with a 0. And they have no impact on the last digit of our overall sum whatsoever. Then we added up the remaining factorials from 1 to 4. We saw that the sum ends with a 3, and we concluded that the overall sum of 10 factorials also ends with a 3. This gave us the correct answer B. The key takeaway here is that if you see a GMAT quant problem that is too hard to calculate in under two minutes, it's too complex, there is definitely a shortcut here. Just have to analyze the problem a bit deeper. Try to look at the components of the problem separately. Try to analyze the answer choices provided. You will surely see the patterns that pop up. These patterns will indicate your shortcut. That is all. Thank you for watching.